Hey, good morning to you early birds. Good morning. Yes, social faith, we're at it again. Excited about today. Tag somebody this morning, like and share, let them know that we're on. I am sure the Holy Spirit has something to say. Very, very confident of that. So if you're on this morning, like and share, let people know that we're here. If you enjoy what you are hearing, if it resonates with you, if it, like, connects with your spirit you know everything isn't for everybody but i believe that god has something that he is wanting to say to his people and so i'm obedient to that amen so if you are on like and share i um i'm just kind of excited about the word <laughs> this morning and looking forward to sharing with you we're going to be on in three more seconds Ooh. it's good to see you this morning well i really can't see you i would love to see you um, i'm working on that i would love to see what's going on out there your comments please make comments that's what this morning's session is about some questions that I got regarding unforgiveness so we're going to tackle that in a little bit good morning everybody Let's see if I can do something a little different here We are live and we are ready to go. Now one more second. Welcome to Social Faith. Please share us. One more second. One more second. Welcome to Social Faith. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can do this. I'd like to see. Good morning, Kiana. Thank you for joining us. Please like and share. I see you out there, Tasha. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Looking forward to this time together. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Social Faith this morning. We are excited. We've gotten through a whole week of some of everything. All of us did some of everything this week. See, so like somebody turned up the do everything fire. And, um, but praise God, we got it done. And so we're so thankful this morning that we get to see a brand new morning and we have these brand new fresh mercies this morning right I was thinking about we had we had rain so much and then we had sun so much and then we had rain again and we're so prayerful for those areas here in our Miami area that are still having struggles with the, the rain um, but we also want to say we just thank God for life this morning. We had been talking about unforgiveness and um, we, we gave some points on what that looks like. And we believe, uh, when I say welcome to social faith, 
I'm talking about walking with boots on the ground, people, through everyday life in faith according to the word of God, hand-to-hand -hand combat with the enemy of our faith with the word of God. So that's why it's social because it's marketplace, it's life, it's everywhere. We can take our faith and apply it in every area of our lives. So this morning, we talked about unforgiveness. We know what that is. We talked about that prison feeling, being locked down, being locked up. But this morning, we're going to turn the table because the way we get out is by turning the table on unforgiveness and making a, a decision, a conscious decision, a deliberate decision to walk in forgiveness. That forgiveness, let me give you this definition. Forgiveness is a conscious, deliberate decision, this is Webster, to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. So forgiveness is, remember, it's about you, it's about me. Unforgiveness is about what somebody else did to us, but at the end of the day, it's our responsibility to make a choice, no matter what it is, to actually forgive that individual. I can't forgive that person for you. You can't forgive that situation for me. We have to do this for ourselves. Why forgive? Because we always need forgiveness, and we're going to look at that. Forgiveness requires, however, a maturity. So if you are a believer and you just now God say, welcome to the family. You're on the road of a lifetime. This is the best time of your life. If you, I get excited about new believers because they haven't had an opportunity to really, really not believe God. You can walk in this thing and you can start out fresh believing God. And when you come into the things of Christ, you bring those things with you. You bring some unforgiveness. You bring some hurt. You bring some pain. Some serious things have happened in your life. May have been the catapult to putting you into the body of Christ. But it's going to take a maturity on even your behalf. If you got saved yesterday, you got all the equipment that all of us who've been saved for a while have also. God is just that kind of God. He gives all of us the measure of faith. He doesn't give some this amount, that amount. He gives us all the measure of faith and that we work that, we grow that, we mature that according to what life is. He has according to what journey he's put us on so yes I want us to understand that when we forgive it is coming from a the fruit of the Spirit it is coming from a place of Holy Spirit and because we are tripart human beings we are spirit soul and body we mature our spirit by this word we already looked in Matthew 11 and we saw for ourselves, the word told us, if we don't forgive, <laughs> then God can't forgive us. And he would never, God is such a loving God, he would never put us in a situation that we can't handle it. It might feel like it, shucks yeah, it might feel like it, Woo. how am I going to make it, how can I get through this, I am hurting. I, I mean, this thing stings, but your loving father would never allow you to go through anything, anything that you cannot bear. And we know that scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, nothing, there is nothing that you could ever be facing. God desires us to seek forgiveness, and that's why he gave us the fruit of the Spirit. That's why one of the fruit of, of, of one of the characteristics of that fruit is long suffering. Because another characteristic is faith. 
Because why? Because he knew, and that would be found in um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, he knew that we had to do life every day. But he told us back in Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th verse, that he made you and me just like him in our image, in his image, in his likeness, so that we would be able to face and do whatever we come into in this life. Now listen, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 13 verse 4 talks about love. And this is going to be key in your forgiveness journey. Yep, this is going to be key. You love. You are going to have to decide that your God is love and you're made in the image of love and that you are capable of loving and you are capable of loving the unlovable it takes patience so you gotta be mature it takes patience it takes patience to walk out the hurt the disappointment it's not gonna happen overnight but if you're walking it out with the Lord if you're walking it out with the word, oh my goodness, every day gets sweeter than the day before. That is not a cliche. When you can walk up and one day you wake up and you realize that you don't feel that, you don't feel that clamp on your heart. You don't feel that cell that you were living in, that it's really it's been broken because you decided to put your feet to the word of God and believe the scripture. You know, I have been doing this for a while, but do you know I'm not perfect in this? Do you know that every day I have to start over? And when I say start over, I have to start with that word, get in that word. Do you know situations come up in my life, your life too? And no matter what we have already faced it at one time before we've learned tools that's why when you're going through the test even though you've been given um the word of god you still have to learn you still have to walk it out you still have to experience it for yourself so when it comes around again it won't affect you. It won't be like the other time because you learned something. A lot of times, saints, we look for that way of escape. But we got to get the lesson before we get the escape. God knows exactly when to open that door of freedom because he knows that we become resilient, we become mature, and we have gained patience in our situations. One of the, um, one of the questions that came up and I want to share that it was how do I actually do forgiveness in my daily life how do I do forgiveness in my daily life so we have to start out with Matthew what six oh that was so deep I know no we do we have to start out with Matthew six and thirty three you know it, you know it, you know it, but let's look at it. Because to walk out every day anything, anything, not just unforgiveness, we have to start out with seeking first the kingdom. We, we, we can't get away from that. We have to start out first seeking the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Look, let's read it from the from paper though. Um it says here, Matthew 6, and I want to go straight here to 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, or God's right way of doing things. And all these things shall be added to you. So, first of all, to do this every day, every day we've got to seek out this word. We've got to seek out what the word says. We've got to understand why we are hurting. We got to understand if we've gone past the actual hurt to vengeance. If we've got to, we've got to figure out if we gone, we've gone past the actual incident to wanting to get that individual. Because when we start seeking the kingdom, then we realize that we have been given so much mercy and we've been given so much grace. 
in, in Luke chapter 7, I love this scripture because I can remember coming into the kingdom. I came into the kingdom straight from the street. You know, I wasn't that person who um, had grown up in the church and had went to church all the time. No, I didn't. I came up from from going to the to the party, to the club, to the you name it. It was going down. But when I came into Christ and I I had a, a vision, he showed me who I was in him and he showed me how much I loved him. And one of the scriptures that he took me to, and if you have your word, and I hope you do, because you know that's what faith social faith is about. Write this down. Luke chapter 7 verse 47. Luke chapter 7 verse 47. Because in that scripture it talks about, that's that's the woman that was washing Jesus' feet and she had been through life and, and, and it talked about the alabaster box. But in that scripture it says I tell you her sins and they are many have been forgiven so she has shown me much love you know he's talking about the he's talking to the dude that invited him into into his house for to come and sup with he says you I tell you her sins and they are many have been forgiven so she has shown, shown me much love but a person who is forgiven little shows only little love well you're looking at sister Barbara and I'm telling you, much love is what I have because I was forgiven for so much. And when I think about forgiving someone else, I always have to go back to the, to the love that God showed me. Yes. I remember one time and in, 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 in I was in church and we had a prophet come to the church and um, she called me out. It was one of the first times that I'd ever been, um, the first of two times that I've ever been really called out. And she called me out and I kind of like froze, you know, because I kind of know, well, I don't know what she's going to say, but a prophet is always going to bless you with love and it's never going to embarrass you and it's never going to, but you know, at that time I was a new believer and I didn't know. And she called me out and all I wanted was Jesus, people. All I wanted was the Lord. I just wanted the Lord. And when she called me out, she said to me, um, God has delivered you from many relationships, from many men. And um, she said like maybe a couple of minis, like many, many, a couple of minis. <laughs> and um, one of my daughters was like, she teases me, you know, sometimes. And she says, you know, that prophet said many, 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 many. And, you know, we laugh about it, but he did. He delivered us. He forgave us. How could we not? How could we not forgive others? Well, that was my testimony. I'm talking about me. Yes, I was, and I still am, but I still believe, I still believe that God loves us so much. And now we have to be able to extend that love to someone else. Another question was, what can I do to develop a better attitude of forgiveness? Well, this is not an in-all list or, or, or you've got to do some work on your own and see how that works for you. But one of the things you can do is take a piece of paper and write down all of the things that you have been forgiven for. Just write them down. Get some papers. And write down, <laughs> yeah, write down all the things that you have been forgiven for. Thank you. you come on in. We're going to keep it real. We, this is social faith. And when you look at that list, how God has extended his mercy towards us. How merciful he's been towards you and me. You begin to understand how you have the propensity to forgive someone else who was going through whatever they were going through and they offended you and they hurt you. Because sometimes people are deranged. Sometimes people are just repeating cycles that they've gone through in their own lives. Sometimes some 
body have seen that's the way their father handled it or that's the way their mother handled it and when they came into your life they handled it the same way but if we get this and we understand that God forgave you and I for everything on that list oh my God he's such an awesome father then we want to walk in that kind of forgiveness if you will what blocks forgiveness from working and being exhibited in my life. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 really quickly. Let's look at that. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Ooh, what blocks forgiveness? A lot of times what blocks forgiveness is our choice. <laughs> we just mad and we're not going to forgive you. That's it. But that's not what we want to do because when we block forgiveness, we stay in prison. Uh-huh. And we don't want to be in prison. We want to be free. We want to walk this journey in freedom. Um, my Bible reads, I'm going to start at verse 4. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's not fleshly. It's not, I'm going to get you back. But mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Unforgiveness is a stronghold. It is a stronghold that keeps us captive. But forgiveness annihilates unforgiveness. Verse 5 says, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to get them. Oh, they hurt me. Bringing every thought they deserve. They deserve. Somebody need to take them out. They, uh, they deserve it. Uh, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So first, we have to be obedient I know, right? This is something else. You have to be obedient to this word when it says, bring all of these thoughts of revenge, hatred, anger, all of these thoughts into the captivity of the word of God. Because, see, this battle is going on up here in the mind. This unforgiveness, you, 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 it's not the heart. It's, it's in the mind that this unforgiveness is taking place. And so we want to address it like that. And then it says, you have to be willing. Don't wanna don't don't you don't don't decide to get to get back to be to be revengeful. Because God will do this. God is such a an awesome God and he when he says vengeance is mine, it means he has a plan. But his plan for vengeance is not about the, the person, he'll take care of that person. You and I, we have to get to that place to surrender the hurt to God. God, I can't do this. I can't see this person. I wake up in the house with them every day. But God, I need to, to, to walk in love, your love, your agape love that doesn't have any measurements on it to be able to do this. How can I make forgiveness function better and stronger in my life was another question. It's by developing people a better relationship with the Lord. That's how we get stronger and stronger and stronger. The same way you go to the gym and you work out and, and some of you guys are great. You go to boot camps. You do boot camps. Well, you got to do boot camp. That's why I say we got to do boots on the ground in the Word. Because that's what gets us stronger. We have to earnestly pray and we have to earnestly seek the scriptures. And we have to earnestly pray for that individual or that circumstance. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I, I know, right? We have to pray for that person. Or those persons because that's when we get free because Holy Spirit starts revealing things that we can pray for them and we can see how they are locked down we can see how the enemy is destroying them and we have to realize that they are even if they're not in Christ they have the propensity be, to become a brother and sister and we have the responsibility to help that out once we help ourselves I know it's hard but when we become wrapped up in the love of God people oh my goodness Ooh, let me calm down 
When we become wrapped up in God's love, then we are able to walk out the darkness that we face every day. You're able to go to that office in the love of God with that same person and, and their same deceitful ways and their underhanded attempts to, to, to get rid of you or to cause you problems. You're able to go in that in God's love. You're glowing and you're growing in the love of God. So we're going to stop here. I got some, some great stuff that I had asked some brothers and sisters as to how they grow their faith. And I want to share one of them today. And next week, we're going to share some other um, thoughts about different people who have looked at their lives and they're walking this out and they're young and they're vibrant. And, and so one of the brothers told me that they walk out 1 Corinthians um, chapter 13. And one thing that they said in that is that love is filled with action. And then they said, a spiritual love life without Jesus being the center is a sinking life. That's not my statement. That's one of these brothers that told me that was awesome. A spiritual love life without Jesus being the center is a sinking life. So we're going to stop there. We've got so much more to go on forgiveness. Thank you so much. Um, any thoughts, any questions, put it in the chat. So glad you came on. Always glad to be here with you. Father, we thank you this morning for a spirit of forgiveness operating in our lives because we want to be forgiven at all times. We are not minimizing the hurt that your children are experiencing now, but we are saying we want to surrender that hurt. We want to surrender that pain at your feet, Lord Jesus, because we know that you care for us. Your word says that you are concerned about those things that concern us and so today we walk out this life freshly and we go forth boldly knowing that every step of the way you are with us god bless you have an awesome rest of the day with what you are doing and remember seek ye first the kingdom of god and all of his righteousness love you